Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. Deganji reporting for The Media Speaks, and uh, we have a wide variety of news today. Um, many different things. Um, none of them really tie together except for the last two. This is from PCWorld.com. <clears throat> More than 4,000 groups sign up to protest the NSA. This, was, this is good news. More than 4,000 groups and websites have signed on to support a day of protest against U.S. National Security Agency surveillance programs secured for Tuesday. In addition, tens of thousands of people have pledged to make calls and post messages on the web in support of surveillance reform, said organizers, the day we fight back. <clears throat> Among the groups supporting the Day of Web Protest are the American Civil Liberties Union, Amnesty International, Boing Boing, Demand Progress, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, Fight for the Future, Free Press, Mozilla, Reddit, and Tumblr. Together, we will push back against powers that seek to observe, collect, and analyze our every digital action, organizers wrote on the thedaywefightback.org. Together, we will make it clear that such behavior is not compatible with democratic governance. Together, we will persist and we will win this fight. Uh, let's remember, we're winning fights on all fronts every day. I mean, we're seeing this in the fact, uh, even little things like them taking the uh, yoga mat uh, ingredient out of Subway bread. Um, the, more we, the more we make ourselves and our wishes known on this, the more these people are going to listen says, together we will push back against powers that seek to observe, collect, and analyze our every digital action. I love that. Um, organizers of the protest are encouraging websites to display banners calling for a scaling back of the NSA surveillance program. The groups will encourage people to call or email members of the U.S. Congress and post Twitter messages, write Facebook posts, and engage in other online activity. Many organizers hope that the protest will spur Congress, it says, to pass the U.S. Freedom Act, a bill that would scale back the NSA's bulk collection of U.S. tax telephone records. The bill introduced in October would, uh, following leaks about the NSA surveillance from former contractor and hero Edward Snowden, has more than 140 co-sponsors between its versions in the Senate and House of Representatives. That's wonderful to hear. Very, very, very good to hear. Um, I hope, uh, you know, I hope more people decide to uh, turn off the uh, TV and go actually do something. Uh, again, I don't have the graphics back on this show yet, but uh, if you go to uh, PC World and look the article up, I'm not that interesting. <laughs> it's a woman in a, uh, in a traditional Muslim, Muslim garb, but her face is out. <laughs> awesome picture. Guys, at time.com, nearly half of America lives a paycheck to paycheck. I'm sure that this uh, is a surprise to uh, very few, but it's just very sad to read now how common this is. Um, the economic picture is looking brighter these days. The federal government announced Thursday that economic growth had picked up to its fastest pace in two years, while employment growth over the past five months has averaged a healthy 185,000 new jobs. But... As evidenced by a report out Thursday from the Corporation for Enterprise Development, nearly half of Americans are living in a state of persistent economic insecurity that makes it difficult to look beyond immediate needs and plan for a more secure future. I've said it for a long time. America is not the land of opportunity. That's something you heard and were lied to about. It was, uh, I'm 41, it's long before we were born because I've never seen an opportunity for anything in my life. Um, you, you, you can't start somewhere and work your way up because most of the jobs have been sent away along with the factories and uh, the, you know, there's only so many CEOs available for outsourced companies. Um, the entertainment, media, uh, news organizations are all owned by, what, 50 or 100 people? We've covered that on this show extensively. Uh, they, they pyramid down, but there's only a handful of people that run everything. All of the opportunities have been taken from us. That's one of the reasons that I depart uh, in some degree. Um, I've heard libertarians say that if you pay, you know, 
10 bucks an hour to a McDonald's employee that your cheeseburger is going to go up. The price of your cheeseburger sh burger should go up. That is what happens when you outsource all of the opportunities away from the country because it's not like you can work your way up or earn anything in this country anymore. That has been destroyed. There is no upward mobility in this country for almost everybody in it anyway. In other words, too many of us are living paycheck to paycheck, and that applies to no matter how hard you work or how talented you are. Those two things mean nothing. The CFED calls for folks calls these folk, folks liquid asset poor, and its report finds that 44% of Americans are living with less than $5,887 in savings for a family of four. The plight of these folks is compounded by the fact that the recession ravaged many Americans' credit scores to the point where now 56% of us have subprime credit. Uh, I went through a bankruptcy, and I never made bad decisions. I didn't make stupid decisions in my life. There were just no opportunities. There were no jobs. There's no anything. Uh, I'm currently a DJ, and it pays well, but uh, there's no job security there. I mean, you never know when tomorrow, you know, it's just the nature of the job. I've been there for a very long time, and hopefully I'll, you know, continue being there. But the point is... Um, it's not like, you know, I, I got a degree in what's in our web design and music production. None of that stuff's done in this country anymore. Um, and, uh, again, the same 50 people control everything. This is really sad. That means that if emergencies arise, many Americans are forced to resort to high-interest debt from credit cards and payday loans. Um, I do have insurance right now, thankfully. Most of my life I have not had it. Um... I think it's important to note that yeah, I, I had vertigo. It came, went, thank God, in heaven, it never came back. With my insurance, it cost me $1,000. Bam. I, mean, it was, it, I got slammed. So, I mean, $5,000 for a family of four, that's terrible. Um, it says the financial insecurity isn't just affected to lower classes. According to the CFED, one quarter of middle class households also fall into the category of liquid asset poor. Geographically, most of the economically insecure are clustered in the South and West, with Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama, Nevada, and Arkansas being the states with the highest percentage of financially insecure. Um, that's I can see that. Um, my my f girlfriend's fiance's family uh, is down by Arkansas, and their home is nice. But you could tell as you were driving through different neighborhoods on the way there from the airport, which took a very long time. That, and they're hit hard. That article, I can tell you from first-hand experience on many fronts, is very accurate. Guys, um, I called Edward Snowden a hero. Well, we have another hero here, and uh, there's no way that this little boy would not be on my show. Fox8.com, boy who died saving family laid to rest as firefighter, as he freaking should be. Listen to this, CNN. Friends and our relatives Wednesday paid their respects to Tyler Duhan, the eight-year-old upstate New York boy who helped rescue six relatives from a fire but then perished while trying to save his grandfather. In a mass at St. John of Rochester Catholic Church, Tyler was honored with a firefighter's funeral. The funerals of two other relatives who also died in the fire were held at the same time. The church was filled with mourners, including basketball players from Wisconsin Silver Lake College, who were so moved by his story that they traveled there to New York to be pallbearers. Oh, his coffin must have been so light. That's so sad. In addition, firefighters from multiple jurisdictions stood at attention in Class A dress uniforms as bagpipes played traditional music as is customary when a firefighter is laid to rest. That is wonderful to hear. It's very nice to see the system finally did something nice. I'm, I'm amazed they didn't, uh, the police chief didn't fine the uh, family. Uh, you know, I, again, I, that's a joke. This, this is probably a wonderful police chief, so that was a joke. you got to find some humor in the fact that you've got so many things going on around you that don't make any sense. If you dwell on it too much, you're going to lose your mind. So sometimes it's very nice to find sobering stories like this that are, uh, where somebody finally got the credit they deserved. I was just talking about opportunities. It's very nice that they're actually noticing what this, this little boy hero did. I've never done anything as heroic as this boy. Have you? Um, 
It says, uh, firefighters in multiple jurisdictions. Uh, oh, I read that. Penfield Fire Chief Chris M. Meyer declared Tyler an honorary firefighter and presented his family with a special fire helmet inscribed with the boy's name. God bless them. This is a helmet we give to the family to symbolize that Tyler is indeed a part of the Brotherhood of Firefighters as an honorary fighter fighter in Penfield, and Meyer said. Tyler's mother, Christopher Ramon, spoke for her son. You're a hero, baby. She said through tears, you did it huge. I know you're watching this go down, and you should be so proud of yourself. You did it huge, all right. Uh, it says there's an empty, uh, there's a void in 240, a room 240, according to his teacher. Listen to this. Um, it says he was staying at home with relatives in Penfield on January 19th when he noticed a fire in a single wide trailer, officials said. As firefighters and sheriff's deputies responded to a 4.45 a.m. emergency call, so the little guy was probably fast asleep and woke up with the wherewithal of a ninja, Tyler was able to wake six other people up in the small trailer, including two more children, ages four and six, the fire official said. Then Tyler went back into the blaze to help his grandfather, who was disabled and would have been unable to get out of the home on his own. By the time the fire had traveled to the back of the trailer, Edmeyer said at the time, unfortunately, both of them succumbed to heat and smoke. The pair were found together in a bed in the back room. It appeared that the boy was trying to lift his grandfather from the bed when he was overcome by smoke and fire, fire officials said. So the grandfather was probably already unconsious. That is a... That, I'll tell you what, whoever that boy's parents are, you are also very heroic. You raised, you raised quite a person um, on behalf of the correct views. Uh, ArcadiaGrill.biz, friends, go to the Arcadia Grill if you are in Canton, Ohio. Why? Because you're going to get delicious food. I went to the ArcadiaGrill.biz, and here's what I saw. See if any of this sounds good to you. New York strip, two broiled pork chops, one chop, either one, grilled ham steak, hamburger steak, Italian sausage, hot or mild, veal masala, liver and onions, turkey dinner, country fried steak, uh, shrimp, scrod, Walleye, pasta, three cheese manicotti, spaghetti. Uh, it goes on. I'm not, I mean, I'm not even halfway down the page, friends. It's huge. Pasta primavera. Go to the Arcadia Grill and feast on some of the best food that you have ever consumed. They're on Court Avenue in downtown Canton. Uh, if you're anywhere in Ohio, it's worth the drive. Come up, have the food, and uh, let Maria know Sam sent you to the Arcadia Grill. Um, I just did the massive Fukushima update. I did that uh, the Monday and Tuesday, and uh, this being now Thursday, Friday morning, however you want to look at it. I'm going to do one Fukushima story anyway, because I want to stay on this, and I want to make sure all of you are realizing that this is, in fact, an ongoing disaster. FukushimaDiary.com, TEPCO, not to announce the total exposure dose of workers for reactor for pool fuel removing. Fukushima Diary, when they, uh, when you have a language like Japan, Japanese and you bring it into a receptor language, as Hank Hanegraaff says, like English, the sentences don't always flow smoothly. So if you're new to the show, long-time listeners will tell you, uh, sometimes it some, makes for some interesting reading. But basically, they are saying that the, they're hiding how bad the workers over there are getting juiced. That way it's easier, you know, if they're honest about it, then not only are they going to have to pay a lot of money, but when they lie or truncate their data about what the levels of radiation are, if there's people on the ground getting as juiced as they really are and everyone knows it, then you'll be able to prove that the numbers that they used for the readings outside of that area are likely faulty too, just due to wind patterns. So friends... I'm going to go ahead and read this to you. It says, following up the uh, another article that's on here, TEPCO announced they won't publish the total exposure dose of the workers who were involved in reactor for pool fuel removing. Unlike they expected, the pool water is contaminated to, rise, to raise the radiation dose in the pool area. NRA ordered TEPCO to take measures to reduce the atmospheric dose. Yeah, so they told him, you got to get that dosage down. Okay, yeah, something's being done about it. What? The significant exposure is anticipated, but TEPCO is not going to disclose the data. 
Additionally, TEPCO stated that they won't announce the reason why they won't disclose it either. In other words, we're not going to let you know how bad you're getting dosed, Mr. Worker, and we're not going to tell you why you don't get to know. Of course, we all know it has to do with lawsuits, among other things. But if that's not how they're treating the people on the ground there, their own people, do you think they care if you, Mr. American, you, Mr. Canadian, are eating the most toxic fish ever as long as they get their money. Do you think they really care? Come on now. Breitbart.com. Um, this ties into the dunce of the day next. Cryosat satellite finds Arctic ice increased 50% in volume. For you uh, weekend fans, uh, that is half. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's amazing. You hear these lies. Man-made global warming. Like, the polar bears don't have any ice. Polar ice increased, polar sea ice increased 50% over the last year alone, growing from 6,000 to 9,000 cubic kilometers when compared to the same period in 2012. Moreover, this year's multi-year ice is 30 centimeters thicker than last year, and scientists claim that thick multi-year ice indicates healthy Arctic sea ice cover. But I thought man was warming the planet only because you're an idiot. The results were revealed by the European Space Agency Cryosat satellite mission. The Cryosat 2 was launched in April 2010 and is designed to measure sea ice thickness across the thickness. Thickness across the entire Arctic Ocean. The satellite's findings indicate that the volume of Arctic sea ice has increased substantially. These findings prove to be at odds with Al Gore's predictions back in 2009 when he spoke at the United Nations Climate Change Conference. Gore stated that computer models reflect that there is a 75% chance that the entire North Polar Ice cap during some of the summer months could be completely ice-free during the next five to seven years. This dolt was uh, elected president by popular vote. He was cheated out of it, thankfully. Well, then again, we got Bush. He was no better. But uh, this dolt wanted to run the country. Past satellite missions showed a decline in Arctic Ocean ice over the last few decades. However, the actual volume of sea ice has proven difficult to determine because it moves around, and so its thicknesses can change. The Cryosat 2 satellite has provided scientists with information that, for the first time, allows them to accurately measure the thickness of the ice. We didn't expect the greater ice extent left at the end of this summer melt to be reflected in the volume, but it has been, and the reason is related to the amount of multi-year ice in the Arctic, said Rachel Tilling from UK Center for Polar Observation and Modeling, who spearheaded the study. Climate change advocates still warn that this increase in ice volume does not indicate a reversal of the long-term trend. There has been no long-term trend. That is a bold-faced lie from climate change advocates. The planet has not warmed in 15 years. Cryosat 2 measurements demonstrate that the Earth climate might not be warming, but it's changing. It, it, it's uh, Somebody put a house beat behind this. Man-made global warming is a lie. Oons, oons. Guys, time for the dunce of the day. It's from InfoWars. Well, they had it posted. It's actually from American Dream, Michael Snyder. On the coldest day in America in 20 years, here are Al Gore's stupidest global warming quotes. The dunce of the day goes to Al Gore, who stood behind these comments and continue to try to tell you that the planet is warming due to you driving your damn car. You might be giving yourself lung cancer. You are not warming the planet. <sighs> Listen to these. It says, uh, the Midwest, uh, yeah, 30 to 50 degrees below the average. Uh, let's find some of these wonderful things he said. Uh, here we go. People in Green Bay, their beers were turning to ice before they could drink them when they were playing the 49ers. Um, it says it's being projected, that of course it happened, that the nation would be in a deep freeze. So here is some of the, uh, the wonderful things that Al Gore has come up with. 
if you're under 40 years old, you've 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 not seen this stuff before. That's how cold it's been, in other words. But Al Gore said in 2008, he boldly declared to a German audience that the entire North Polar ice cap will disappear in five years. Uh, we got the CO2 is the exhaling breath of our civilization, literally. Changing that pattern requires a scope, a scale, a speed of change that is beyond what we've done in the past. Actually, without carbon dioxide, the Earth would not exist, but he doesn't seem to know that. Uh, CO2, uh, the planet has a fever. If your baby has a fever, you go to the doctor. If the doctor says you need to intervene here, you don't say, well, I read science fiction novels that told me not, not to worry about it. If the crib's on fire, you don't speculate that the baby is flame retardant. You take action. The funny thing about that is that none of that, that's the exact opposite of what's happening to the planet. The baby would be burning, and the planet isn't warming. Moron! During a speech at NYU Law School in 06, Al Gore made the following statement. Many scientists are now warning that we are moving closer to several tipping points that could, within the next 10 years, make it impossible for us to avoid irretrievable damage to the planet's habitability ha of human civilization. That was in 06. you got two years left before all that happens. Uh, he said, here is the truth. The Earth is round. Saddam Hussein did not attack us on 9-11. Elvis is dead. Obama's, Obama was born in the United States, and the climate crisis is real. Those last, things, those last two things are, in fact, false. Uh, the interior of the Earth is extremely hot, several million degrees. It actually peaks out at 11,000 degrees. Several million degrees! There isn't an air of unreal. There's an air of unreality in debating these arcane points when the world is changing in such dramatic ways right in front of our eyes because of global warming. Uh, yeah, except for the fact, of course, that we are not warming. Let's not forget that. And there hasn't been any warming for 15 years. ClimateGate.com. Um, it would be an enormous relief if the recent attacks on the science of global warming actually indicated that we do not face an unimaginable calamity requiring large-scale intervention. Well, he's got two more. The survival of the United States of America as we know it is at risk. And even more, if more should be required, the future of human civilization is at risk. Yeah, of freezing to death. Ten, we ought to approach this challenge with a sense of profound joy and gratitude that we are the generation about which a thousand years from now Philharmonic orchestras and poets and singers will celebrate by saying they were the ones that found it within themselves to solve the crisis. A moron. It says it's 2013, and contrary to the alarmist predictions that he made, uh, critics refer to this as a doomsday cult. The latest satellite data shows what I just said in the last article. However, American taxpayers spent $7.45 billion dollars to help developing countries cope with climate change that isn't happening in fiscal years 2010 through 2012, when it never happened, we never warmed up at all during that. According to a federal government report submitted to the United Nations on a subject that Secretary of State John Kerry described as truly life or death. And of course, we all know about the scientists that were stuck in the Arctic because they were they were freezing to death, and uh, they actually got stuck in the ice that they went to study how it wasn't there. So, the Al Gore, you win the dunce of the day, friends. You're listening to the correct views. Do you miss the dunce cap of the month? If you do, let me know. Sam I B Deganji reporting for the Media Speaks. Go to the Media Speaks. Look up the work of Kyle Court D Lake and myself. We're always posting information and articles. Um, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and hit share. And the way you share on YouTube is by hitting remix. It'll post this video on your channel, and then people will get the information that way as well. And let's face it, that's why I'm out here. To donate, to help me get better gear, and to have a better show, go to the correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny you give me goes to this show. Good night, friends. God bless. And try not to freeze to death in Al Gore's global warming.